Metabolism encompasses all the processes and pathways needed for cell survival. These processes can be classified as catabolic processes or anabolic processes. Catabolic processes involve the breakdown of dietary components with the purpose of producing energy, most likely NADH and FADH2, which are eventually converted to ATP, a more readily usable form of energy. Anabolic processes will use the ATP produced from catabolism to synthesize cellular components like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, membranes, nucleotides, nucleic acids, and other macromolecules, as well as maintain other cellular processes. Metabolism is compartmentalized. Some of the most important anabolic pathways occur in the cytoplasm. This includes glycogen, fatty acid, triacylglycerol, cholesterol, and nucleotide biosynthesis, as well as amino acid biosynthesis. On the other hand, some of the most important catabolic processes occur in the mitochondria, including pyruvate dehydrogenase, TCA cycle, fatty acid beta oxidation, and glutamate dehydrogenase, with glycolysis, glycogenolysis, and HMP pathway occurring in the cytoplasm. It is noteworthy that the urea cycle and gluconeogenesis start in the mitochondria and continue in the cytoplasm. There are three stages of catabolism. Stage one, which occurs primarily in the intestinal lumen, involves the digestion of dietary components, polysaccharides, proteins, and triacylglycerols into their building block components, uh, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, and monoacylglycerol, respectively. Glucose and amino acids are picked up by the enterocytes and eventually released into the bloodstream, whereas uh, digested lipids, fatty acids, and monoacylglycerols are reassembled into a chylomicron triacylglycerol rich molecule and then released into the bloodstream. After their pickup from circulation, glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids are catabolized inside the cell, either in the cytoplasm or the mitochondria, to produce high energy molecules. Of the four major catabolic pathways, only glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm whereas pyruvate dehydrogenase, the TCA cycle, and fatty acid beta oxidation occur inside the mitochondria. The NADH and FADH2 produced by the three mitochondrial catabolic pathways will be present in the mitochondrial matrix and will be directly accessible for the third stage of catabolism uh, uh, which occurs inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. The purpose of the third stage of catabolism is to convert the high energy molecules NADH and FADH2 into a usable form of energy that can be readily used by the cell, namely ATP. This occurs through the coupled process of electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation.
glucose has at least four uses in the cell. The first one is through glycolysis to produce energy and two molecules of pyruvate. The second one is in storage of glucose as glycogen, which occurs in both liver and muscle. The third one is in the hexose monophosphate pathway or pentose phosphate pathway, which produces NADPH and a pentose phosphate or ribose phosphate needed for nucleotide biosynthesis. The fourth important use is in glycosaminoglycans, which are important extracellular uh, matrix components and the glycolipids which are plasma membrane components. Fatty acids play at least four important roles in energy production, in energy storage, in membrane synthesis and in inflammation. Fatty acid beta oxidation in the mitochondria is the major energy producing pathway from dietary and stored lipids. Fatty acids are stored in the form of triacylglycerol in adipocytes and provide many tissues with the energy they need during fasting. Phospholipids, the major membrane components, are made from fatty acids and glycerophosphate. The essential fatty acid, linoleic acid, is the precursor of arachidonic acid, which in turn is the precursor of all eicosanoids. There are four distinct uses of amino acids from dietary proteins. First one is to provide amino acids to rebuild uh, tissue proteins that have turned over earlier. The second important purpose is to provide uh, the carbon skeletons from amino acids to make uh, glucose in the liver to restore blood glucose. The third important use of amino acids is in the synthesis of uh, purines and pyrimidines needed for nucleotide synthesis. The fourth important use of amino acids is in specialized products like heme, catecholamines and porphyrins. Cholesterol is a unique sterol and is essential for at least four distinct cellular functions. Cholesterol is needed for the synthesis of bile acids and bile salts, which are needed for emulsification of dietary lipids, digestion and uptake. Cholesterol is needed for membrane synthesis and for the maintenance of membrane fluidity. Cholesterol is the precursor for the synthesis of vitamin D. And cholesterol is the precursor for the synthesis of all steroid hormones including cortisol, androgens and estrogens. But this is your, your kind of a, a more traditional average diet. So 50% from carbs, 30% from fat, and about 20% from uh, in protein. So uh, carbs really, polysaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, they will eventually all be metabolized to give you glucose, fructose, or galactose, and those can be metabolized further. The majority, the 90% of dietary fat is, are, uh, is tags, okay? You got to know that. Not cholesterol, not cholesterol. Tags, triacylglycerol, that's 90%. 
The other 10% are these here. Fatty acids, phospholipids, cholesterol. We, I'm just going to try to connect the dots for you here. For the major metabolic pathways, if you have glucose coming from carbohydrates, you're going to have glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, TCA. That's the catabolism of glucose. All energy producing uh, pathways. Fat in the diet, which is, as I said, tags, you break down the tags, you get fatty acids, and you get fatty acid beta oxidation. And fatty acid beta, beta oxidation produces energy as well as acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA can get into the TCA cycle and give you more energy. So I just want you to kind of connect the dots here and appreciate uh, some of the things we've covered. Glucose, a six carbon monosaccharide, is catabolized sequentially by glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, and the TCA cycle to yield eight ATPs, six ATPs, and 24 ATPs, respectively, for a total output of 38 ATPs. Dividing 38 ATPs by 6 carbons in glucose will give you 6.33 ATPs produced per CO2 produced. Beta oxidation of fatty acids is the major catabolic pathway that produces energy from dietary triacylglycerol or stored triacylglycerol. Starting with palmitate, a 16 carbon fatty acid beta oxidation will sequentially remove two carbons at a time in seven cycles to produce a total of eight acetyl-CoA's at the end. The total net ATP output from the complete oxidation of palmitate to CO2 is 129 ATP's produced, which is equivalent to 8.06 ATP's produced per CO2 produced. The complete oxidation of glucose through glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, and TCA cycle produces a maximum of 38 ATPs. Dividing 38 ATPs by 6 CO2s produced gives you 6.33 ATPs produced. Complete oxidation of palmitate, a 16 carbon fatty acids through beta oxidation gives you 129 ATPs. Dividing 129 ATPs by 16 gives you 8.06 ATPs produced per CO2 produced. The complete oxidation of acetoacetate through the TCA cycle produces 24 ATPs. Uh, divided by four carbons produced gives you six ATPs per CO2 produced. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you.